Hello, my name is Mike McShane, director of the Center of the Universe, the Gainesville, Florida poetry movie. It is day one of my campaign. This clip is thanks to Charlie McWhorter, who was the first to make a contribution to this campaign. What better way to start but to begin at the end? This clip is from the last The Word is Spoken that took place at the midnight in Gainesville, Florida. This video is also available as a bonus feature on my film, You Are Not Frank Sinatra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Moss. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest fucking final show. Final show. Tasteless Poetry Volume 6 will still be happening. It won't be called The Word is Spoken, but it will be Tasteless Poetry Volume 6 will, be, will happen. That's Volume 6, S-I-C-K-S. That will happen on uh, October the 26th. Uh, here, there will be a Tasteless Costume Contest, and uh, uh, you'll have to uh, uh, B-Y-O-B-B, -B, uh, bring your own barf back. Yeah, Tom awesome. Miller, Tom Miller are taking a great inspiration from Tom. I really have taken great inspiration from him. He's like hosted all kinds of stuff. And like I kind of consider my shtick up here to be sort of a cross between Tom Miller, um, David Letterman, and a, and a pile of shit. And that's what I try to do. I try to like find that perfect balance. Like, really nice. Shamrock McShane. I'm, Shamrock's getting a special honor tonight. We'll do this in a few minutes, but Shamrock's are going to be honored in a very special way in a few minutes, and it's very unspecial, but it's still special at the same time. He's promised me it won't be a bag of dog shit. I invited him to come back and read, which he did as soon as we got our act together and moved out of the library into a bar. And then Shamrock McShane started showing up, so that's how it goes. Yeah, when you're doing a free speech forum, the library is a very restrictive venue. That was at Bar One, which is where Sweet Mel's is now. Yeah. Bar One, that cursed location. It is. We probably would still would be there if they did any business and if the owner hadn't have like turned out to be turned out to be a child molester and went to prison, you know, so then we were in Tim and Terry's and we'd probably still be in Tim and Terry's. Okay. Except Tim and Terry, the owner decided to get cancer. <laughs> and then we were in the lab and we'd probably still be there except the landlords decided to be giant pubic bones and Every charge on the rent, they had to fold. Why is it that everywhere this show goes, the <laughs> bars close? Everything you touch <laughs> dies. You destroy everything you touch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody, give it up for the midnight. Yay. This place is so awesome to give us our last two shows here. If you have a good time tonight, it is because of them. Make sure you tip your bartender well. Remember, beer plus poetry equals very good poetry. I think we're actually starting. I started sort of accidentally. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's see where I let's see where I can take this. E. E. Cummings. Yes. One day I'd like to get a Model T, and I'm going to take a copy of this poem and put it put a copy of it somewhere on the car, like give the car a tattoo. She being brand new, and you know, consequently, a little stiff, I was careful of her, and having thoroughly oiled the universal, joint tested my gas, felt of her radiator, made sure her springs were O. K, I went right to it, flooded the carburetor, cranked her up, flipped the clutch, and then somehow got into reverse. She kicked, what the hell, next minute I was back in neutral, and again, slowly, barely, nudging my Left right, oh, and her gears being in A1 shape, passed from low through second into high lace grease, slightly just as we turn the corner of Divinity Avenue, I touch the accelerator and give her the juice. Good, it was the first ride, and I believe we was happy to see how nice she acted right up to the last minute coming back down by the public gardens. I slammed on the internal expanding and external contracting brakes both at once and for all of her trouble lean to a dead stand. Still. <laughs> Shamrock McShane, would you please approach the stage? We did that. We did five tasteless poetry shows in a row and gave an award for the tasteless poem. And Shamrock McShane never actually won. Even though all of his poetry, not just at the tasteless show, but I'd say about 75% of it over the years definitely crosses the tasteless line. And so since I'm moving, I ran I ran across something as I'm packing and throwing things away and purging, and I'm like, this would be a perfect gift to give to a tasteless poet then I should give it to a tasteless poet before I leave town. So I'm going to give you the Honorary Lifetime Tasteless Poetry Achievement Award. Wow. Which the, I won these tickets playing skee-ball at Busch Gardens in the late 1970s. And 
These tickets cannot be redeemed for anything anymore. They have expired. But I would like you to have them as a token of my appreciation for being a truly tasteless poet. You are a lifetime achiever, so thank you very much. I'm speechless, which is a bad sign for a poet. If you want to go back to the beginning, we have it on good authority that Cain's father wasn't Adam, but the devil. Hey, the devil fucked Eve? Well, you're surprised. Why? Well, who else is he going to fuck? So, the devil fucks Eve, and, and then what? Jews. <laughs> Jews? <laughs> Jews and Sue. Jesus! Yeah, we'll get to him. Then I got a letter from Paul. Blinded by the light, my ass. He got plastered and fell off his horse. <laughs> so then he comes to us and he says, Okay, okay, so maybe you knew Jesus when he was alive, but I knew him after he was dead. <laughs> Obviously, an appearance after death comes from more than anything a body does when it's alive. What you do while you're alive, eh, that pales in comparison with what you do after you die. I mean, just appearing to the living, that's, that's a hell of a feat. Admit it. It's a miracle. That's got to make you feel inferior, doesn't it? Well, he appeared to us, too. After he died. Yeah, but to all of us. He appeared to Paul all by his lonesome. See? Paul is special. Well, it sounds like bullshit to me. Hey, are you guys talking about Paul, the Apostle, or Paul the Beetle? <laughs> he wasn't an Apostle. Well, he wasn't part of the original group. Now, what are you talking about? Paul and John started the group. All right, I was with the guy for three years, all the way to Jerusalem. He never once said he was God. Well, maybe not in so many words, maybe. No, at all. <laughs> Nothing like it. Well, you were a man who knew another man. That's all. Wait, you're telling me you never met him? Well, not while he was alive, no. Not while he was alive. That's right. What the hell are you talking about? I never met him while he was alive. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I met him after he had risen from the dead. You met him after he had risen from the dead. Yes! You can't see love or hope, but you can't see the wind either. You can see the sun, but you can't see heat. Huh? So maybe he was God without knowing it. That makes no sense. It's possible. It's not possible. By definition, God is omniscient, all-knowing. He couldn't actually be God and not know it. He knows everything. He'd know. Yeah, he would know, but maybe he didn't know it then. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You think? Maybe it begins to dawn on him. You know, it's Spider-Man. <laughs> hey, I can work miracles. You know, like, like Superman. It's possible. It's not possible. Oh, maybe he never knows it, you know? Maybe he doesn't figure it out until he comes back from the dead. And he says, whoa, I must be God. Well, I can't believe how naive you are. Believe it. I believe it. I'll believe anything. You know what you should do? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I know exactly what I should do, which is why I don't need you telling me. Well, what should you do? What should I do? 
Why are you asking me? Because I would never be in that situation to begin with. That's what I'm talking about. That wasn't even tasteless compared to some of the stuff he's got. Right. Goddamn circles around us. Even though we I won't be doing this anymore, that if you want to find out like what I am doing in the future, you can always still email me at those email addresses that I foolishly set up thinking I was going to need them for the rest of my damn life. But that was either word is spoken at hotmail.com or the word is spoken at gmail.com or the word is spoken at aol.com. T h e w o r d i s s p o k e n. All right, I guess I gotta call somebody up here first. Even though it's depressing, we gotta keep this thing moving along. We got a really tight schedule, lots of stuff going on. So you don't want anybody up here on the mic hanging on the mic, just saying all kinds of things and doing all kinds of things and wasting all kinds of time and just extending things out further than they need to be. So without any further ado.